Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top five reasons it is embarrassing to play Magic the Gathering. And I offer these top five reasons as a serious discussion on how we can improve the game and then offer a solution to each of these. Number one, the Hall of Fame is a joke. Uh, the Hall of Fame is very different from any other Hall of Fame in the fact that you are encouraged to continue playing. Normally in, let's take basketball, you have to be retired for a certain amount of years, then you go to the Hall of Fame. And Magic, given that Magic is not a physical sport, you you could be 100 and not be retired, but be have been in the Hall of Fame since you were 20. That's pretty crazy. So the Magic Hall of Fame is a joke, and it is something that when you think about it, what is the benefit of having the Magic Hall of Fame? What is the benefit of the Mana Source Wedge being able to control the livelihoods of professional Magic players? Does Wedge know a lot about pro Magic play? Has he ever been on a pro tour? Has he ever played at a GP? I would say no. So uh, that's number one. Uh, number two is cheating is not only encouraged, it is protected. So it's one thing to have a system where it's easy to cheat, as we have seen from Jared Puccini, Marcellios, whatever his name is, and even Dan, that Dan guy I called out, his the person he cheated commented on a Facebook video with video evidence that he was cheated saying that Dan's a great guy and he would never cheat. A few months later, Dan was suspended for, you guessed it, cheating. Huh. What the blank? And what other game would a person who lost to the cheater and lost the Pro Tour Invitational PTQ or something like that defend the person who cheated him so vehemently against a person who showed him a video of the guy cheating. Only magic. So number two is a combination of Marshall Sutcliffe. You do realize that in just an accusation in a public space has real consequences for Brad, whether it's true or not, right? For Sutcliffe, reaching out privately is the proper response because the real cost to Brad or others. The hit Brad takes threatens his livelihood. You don't see any issue with that, forcing someone to take a public hit to their credibility. It's a big deal to people like Brad who make their living off it. So in the legal term, Marshall, this is called a public figure. And I would argue that Brad is definitely a public figure when it comes to magic. And you don't need to be a super famous public public figure. You can be a famous chess player that no one else knows except the chess community. And you would be considered a public figure. A public figure is they can be criticized. They can be ripped apart. They can be shredded. And that is the deal you make with the devil. The deal is for your, quote, fame you're gonna give up privacy. So Marshall, and this is the culture of magic, is saying that discussions and talk should be done in DMs and you know that's how things are done. I can tell you from the magic YouTube community that we tried that, it doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because there's so much bad things that go on. For instance, uh, there is a video on my channel about the mana source, his friend as well, and it does mention Tolarian Community College where they gang up against a store owner, Dariums, who now has a large Pokemon channel, bigger than Tolarian Community College. And he left the community. Uh, Dariums left the community, the magic community, which he had a large channel at the time because he didn't want to deal with it. And he's happier. Pokemon doesn't have the same issues we do. And that was handled privately, quotation marks. You had people booking plane trips, uh, people actually booking up another content creator who lives in Texas, and I talk, I've talked to her. 
she booked a plane trip to go to this convention. And then later, Wedge decided to tell everyone the convention was canceled without consulting Darium that, yes, indeed, it is canceled. So no one knew that this convention was canceled because a random person decided that he had beef with Unsleeved Media MTG headquarters. That would be Wedge. So number three, it is not viable to be a professional magic player there's no money in it and these people are looked up as they are looked upon as role models this is pv right this is pv one of the best magic players and he says he can barely make about thirty thousand a year thirty thousand a year um that is pretty crazy cable said that He's probably among the top P Pro Tour point earners and tons of finishes, but lost money going to GPs. So even if you are the best Magic player, by going to a GP, you still lose money. And this is why he's a Hearthstone player now. This is why a lot of these people who are serious about making a livelihood serious about making a livelihood are hearthstone players there's no money in magic there's no money if you i mean imagine i give you the skill set and the finishes of brian kibler one of the best magic players of all time and you still lose money at gps that that cannot be right that cannot be all right number four um so number three is purely about the financial reasons Number four, I'm going to talk about the why so many people cheat. Uh, people cheat for, they cheat many ways. There's a guy recently who stole a flooded strand. He's a professional magic player. When asked if he received his promo, he said no, because he wanted a second flooded strand. And then they suspended him, banned him. I don't know what happened to him. Give him a light handshake that's stealing i mean it is it's the very definition of stealing it's taking something that isn't yours by deception so i don't know his name is matthew folks so forever whenever you type in matthew folks let's say that he wants to find a job a real job and his employer wants to do a background check uh, he just google searches him he's going to be associated with stealing a flooded strand worth about 70 bucks. Was his reputation for his entire life online worth that $70? No. Blank no. Of course, Pacini, I have gone into great detail about this guy. I, I am going to keep making videos until they ban him for life. Alex, they gotta ban you for life. And then I'll leave him alone. So this is Matthew. Judge didn't collect my deck list during round one. Go to hand it in. They asked, did I receive a goodie bag? I say no, cause free promo. This was lying to a judge and I got called on it. I'm not a cheater, just a very stupid and shady person. So let me get this straight. For a $70 promo, you solely your reputation for life. This is whenever someone searches your name, from now until the end of days, they know that you stole a magic card. Your future employers, your future wife, your future family, any of your kids. The internet is forever. And your search engine optimization, you guys don't know, need to know what that is, but it's relating to how Google queries a search. Will have you as a person who stole a magic card. Now, James, another person, he cheated and he says, there's so much pressure to put up results. I've had so many good finishes without relevant wins, so they just mean nothing. Everyone deals with pressure and ambition differently. I dealt with it the worst way. This is why every Magic player is a cheater. Every serious Magic player is a cheater. Think about that for a moment. How insane is it? 
every serious Magic player is poor, under a lot of pressure, and is being forced to steal and cheat. What other game... What? Why would you stake your reputation on a Magic card? For now, why would you do that? Why would you stake your reputation, your future employment, everything on stealing a Magic card? Why would you cheat and then your excuse is there's a lot of pressure to cheat when you make under 30000 even if you're the bestest of players? This fandom is insane. That's the only conclusion. It's not logical. None of these actions I have repeated to you a logical person would make. Ask your friend, hey, would you be disqualified and then whenever someone searches your name, it pops up that you stole a magic card? Would you want to steal that magic card? The answer would be no. Ask your friend, would you want to be associated with cheating because you had to write an article for $5? What? Like, how much are they paying him to write this article that he would be forced to cheat so he had a better article to write? So my point is, and remember, Channel Fireball, who are they? Oh, right, they have a monopoly on all the GPs. Huh. So you don't say someone writing for Channel Fireball gets caught for cheating at a Channel Fireball event. How many times did he cheat successfully and write articles? So at the end of the day, I can conclude that everyone in Magic Pro League is a cheater. And that is because they are pressured into it. It is based on circumstance. So quick lesson in circumstance. I truly don't believe that people change. I believe that people have characteristics made which are a basis of multiple decisions made in thousands or as Dr. Strange would say, 14,000 different, 14 million 650 different combinations of choices that you make on a daily basis. So when someone steals a flooded strand, that person is likely to steal no matter where you put them because they stole something as simple as a magic card. So let's say we put him in charge of a cash register. He's gonna steal because what's the difference? Did he learn anything? Probably not. Um, something made him choose that action to steal and we only know he stole because he got caught this one time. We do not know how many times he stole successfully, right? He only admitted to be caught once. If we were to believe everyone who stole, then theoretically, they only ever stole when they got caught. That, I mean, you would have to be an idiot to believe that. Uh, now, cheating. Why are there so many cheaters in Magic? I think it can be summarized that there is a lot of pressure financially, reputation-wise, and even to write an article for the people who have a monopoly over the Pro Tour. This desire for likes and, you know, I, you cannot feed on likes. Like, I, if I give you 100 likes on your Twitter post about how you don't like Donald Trump, does that, has that fed you? Did you get exercise from this wedge? Like, did it burn calories for you? No. These likes are totally useless in real life. But in pretend magic land, these likes have so much value to them and writing an article to get 10 likes versus 100 likes means you have to cheat because then you have a more interesting story to tell because uh, you have interesting dynamics so that is my top five reasons that i am embarrassed to be a magic player it's it all has to do with the top if the hall of famers if the pro magic players the content creators if they all are trash then it makes all the players underneath look like trash too because they are the most visible part it's like an, a giant iceberg the majority of magic players are below the surface they are casual players like you and i and then on the top all you see are the mana sources and marshall sutcliffe who thinks cheating is okay and all the people who steal flooded strand dan dan i mean 
my gosh, he got caught cheating on camera. He went on a podcast to explain that he didn't cheat. Then he got DQ'd eight months later. He was cheating as an employee at the local game store that hosted the event. The guy he cheated went on my YouTube channel video, watched the video of him cheating, which clearly shows he did cheat, and then defended him and got a bunch of likes. Dude, he took and he stole your PT invitation. And you're going to thumbs up him. You're going to defend him. Come on. Have some fangs, you loser. That was very harsh, but I really did mean it in the nicest way possible.